Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to this tutorial on the scintillation mechanism in the sodium iodide detector. So the most commonly used detector is your sodium iodide detector. And as you can see, there is a TL in the brackets, uh, which stands for thallium. And usually what, uh, what is done is the sodium iodide detector is, or the sodium iodide crystal is, um, activated using thallium and the word activated basically means that it is um, doped or um, an impurity is added to the sodium iodide crystal and that impurity is thallium and this sodium iodide crystal is an inorganic crystal so its scintillation mechanism differs considerably from the organic crystals so in this video I'll be telling you guys, or rather explaining this scintillation mechanism. So let's, um, without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so what happens is, um, you have these kinds of valence bands and conduction bands in your sodium iodide crystal due to the delocalized electron bonding. And also one more thing, um, this uh, impurity that is a thallium is uh, what it does is it replaces one in thousand atoms of sodium iodide. So it is a very small impurity. So um, what happens is your sodium iodide crystal without thallium has these two valence and uh, these two bands that is the valence band and the conduction band due to the delocalized bonding. And when you add this impurity that is the thallium atoms then what happens is you get these kinds of electron orbitals between these two bands. So the higher orbitals are called activation center excited states and the lower orbitals are called activation center ground states. And also the, uh, the electron orbitals produced between these two bands are basically called the ac activation centers. So when your sodium iodide crystal is kept without any radiation incident on it, then what happens is all the electrons stay in the valence band and there's no electron in the conduction band. However, when you place your crystal inside or in the presence of some radiation, then what could happen is um, your gamma ray photon, maybe if you have some gamma ray radiation incident on a crystal, then the gamma ray photon would impart its energy to one of the electrons of the crystal. Now this electron would gain a lot of energy and will move out the crystal causing ionizations and excitations as it moves about. Now most of the time what would happen is um, the excitations that this electron would cause, they would also like um, this electron would impart its energy to more electrons and what would happen is those electrons would lose their energy by in the form of heat. However, some of the electrons would gain enough energy to be raised into the conduction band so they will jump into the conduction band from the valence band now once they are in there they would want to come back to the valence band because it is of lower energy however this process is quantum mechanically forbidden so and so this cannot take place and when this electron goes from the valence band to the conduction band it leaves a hole inside the valence band so what could happen is um, one of the electrons from the activation centers could come to the hole inside the valence band because these two have almost similar energies and this electron, the excited electron in the conduction band could um, come to the activation center excited states because they, uh, this process is quantum mechanically possible and they have almost similar energy however this one is lower so it would want to still come into an energy level that is lower um, than the conduction band so it can come to the activation center excited state. So when, once this electron comes from the conduction band to the activation center excited state and one electron goes from the activation center ground state to the valence band. So there's a hole here and there's an electron here. So this transition from the activation center excited state to the activation center ground state is possible and when this electron comes uh, back to the ground state then it would release a photon of the energy corresponding to the band gap and that is how you would get a photon of approximately three electrovolts energy from the sodium iodide thallium activated detector 
So let's say if your gamma ray photon was of um, your gamma ray photon was of like 662 kV for cesium source, then let's say it uh, imparted like 500 kV to one of the electrons in the crystal, and then that electron would cause a lot of excitations and ionization, so it will make a lot of electrons go to the conduction band, and when all of those electrons come back to the ground state by the process that I just explained, then that would lead to a lot of photons of energy 3 electron volt that corresponds to the ultraviolet or blue range of the electromagnetic spectrum. So a lot of photons in, within that range would be um, emitted and that is how you see the flashes of light or the scintillations in the sodium iodide. And here is another diagram. Um, I should have rather used this diagram to explain the process in a better way. So you can see here that the first process, that is the A process, is that one of the electron goes to the conduction band then this cannot come back directly and when it went there it caused a hole to be here and so one of the electron from the ground state of this band would come here and this electron would go to the activation center excited state and then finally it would come here and this C process will lead to the emission of a scintillation photon. So well that's it. I hope you guys understood that. It was pretty easy to follow and if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button and Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I have two or three more videos on scintillation counters. So you better check them out. Thanks for watching and have a great day.